Also tonight, the Gathering North will actually be celebrating uh, its one-year anniversary. Isn't that great? So one year of existence up there at uh, the Marriott and Glenview. So we're excited about that as well. A few things that are happening. We've got a, a coat dri drive going. Is that right, Cindy? For kids in Addison, the Addison School System. Okay, and we're probably going to continue that through December 14th, 21st, or whatever at the latest. But uh, so bring your scarves, your gloves, your hats, any extra coats you've got, just bring them on in here at the gathering, and we'll make sure they get to Cindy, and she'll make sure she gets to the kids. We also got. Uh, a, oh yeah, it's it's for kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, most coats are going to fit. Just bring coats in, yeah. Some fifth graders are pretty good size. Uh, we got uh, a toy drive going on, is that right, Annalise? I can see a bunch of toys back there already. So that's gonna be through uh, December 14th. And next Sunday, uh, Anne Marie from Love Christian Clearinghouse is gonna come and just say a few words about where the toys go that Annalise and her family are collecting. So thanks, guys. So make sure you take them all home, because I can, all right? <laughs> we also are very excited to have an Advent Soup Supper Study, and uh, Victoria's gonna talk about the Advent Soup Supper Study. It's Advent and it's Soup Supper Study. Soup Supper Study. Um, there's SSS. A <laughs> no. There's a sign-up sheet outside um, for general signing up, and then for for this Wednesday, because this Wednesday is going to be our first one. And then um, after that, on the Wednesdays, um, we'll um, figure out who's bringing soup for the next week. So we'll just do it a week at a time. It'll be here, 6.30 is soup, 7 o'clock is the Bible study. Simple Bible study. You don't even have homework. You don't have to do anything ahead of time. It's called Christmas Lights Blitz tonight. I have books if, you, if you're intending to come so that you have it ahead of time. You don't need it ahead of time. But... You each get a book, so um, if you want to get one today, then let me know if you're not signed up already. I think I gave it to everybody who's already signed up, so it should be fun. Um, Carol Bellino's making soup for our first week, so yes. it'll be really good. Well, then, uh, yep. So come for the food, even if you're not coming to the bottom. That's right. <laughs> Spiritual food and yeah. oh. physical food. Also, we're going to kind of culminate our Advent uh, study on Christmas Eve, because that's also on a Wednesday. Uh, and remember, our Christmas Eve service is going to be 5 o'clock here. Not 11 o'clock, but 5 o'clock, so hopefully that'll work into your schedule. I know Christmas Eve is difficult to uh, meet everybody's schedules. Uh, Sue, you want to say a few words? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to let you know that the gathering has generously bought movies for our youth. And we had a youth overnighter <laughs> a couple weeks ago we had talked about it. Well, these were some of the movies that we purchased, and I want to let you know they're here for you to watch. All you have to do is get a hold of me on a Sunday or call me, and I'm going to be like the movie librarian, even though I only have two right now. <laughs> but it's so much less money to do it this way for our kids than it is to take them all to the show, as we found out yep. the hard way last year. Yeah. So anyways, I open these all up to you. Uh, we have Heaven is for Real. It's about a little boy who passes and has a God experience and shares it with everybody when he comes back. And one of my favorites is God's Not oh, Dead. About a college professor that is not really into God. And uh, he challenges one of his students to prove it to him. And so they're, they're wonderful to watch. Let me know. The other thing is, I know everybody's always looking for something to donate their time with around the holidays. What I would like, my wish this year, is for you to donate your time reading the Bible to Ray Beebe. Whether it's going in the morning, around 9 o'clock in the morning before he does his therapy, 
or later in the evening after dinner, or even if it's just a phone call, he really, really needs to hear the word. And I really believe that will strengthen him and, and bolster him up. So you don't need a sign-up sheet, but I really encourage you to contact him the day before. Make sure you can find out what um, his hours are, what's convenient for him. But I just know he would absolutely love, love, love to hear the word of God as often as we can do it. So Amen. thank you. Uh, Kathy, you still have the prayer calendar for Ray? I didn't bring it today. Okay. But I can bring it next week. Yeah, make sure you bring the prayer calendar so we can keep Ray in our prayers. Everybody signs up particular day. And our Facebook challenge worked out. Last okay. week, uh, I brought some sticks. So <laughs> last week, I, I commented to you guys that we have um, people following us on Facebook. So we have a page called, you know, The Gathering for Christ. Um, and so those of you who are on Facebook, probably once in a while see it in your feed and I ask you that if you see it to please just click the like button because every time you click the like button Facebook then sends it to more people and so we currently have 122 followers on that page of which two are new this week Amen. so we had two brand new followers this week so these are just some stats our reach was 80 which is up 142% over the week before. Our post reach was 69, which is up 263% over the week prior. And our B service post, which is the recording of this service. Uh, so I know I told you guys last time that on November 16th service was only shared to 17 people total. Okay, so last week I said, please, if you see it, click it. Okay, it went out to 56 people this time um, instead. So that made a huge difference if 56 people got to see it instead of only 17. So uh, keep clicking if you see things from <laughs> the Gathering for Christ because you're just being a disciple and spreading the word. So yeah, yeah. Keep don't do much advertising. It's a word of mouth. You know, it's not all about the gathering, but it's not a bad idea to get the word out. You know about what's happening here. So that's that's good stuff. Use the modern technology. <clears throat> Is uh, Gail here? Please rise. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We come with great expectation to await the coming Messiah. All creation waits with great longing for the Son of God. As John the Baptist cried in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. We are here to prepare a place in our hearts for his coming.
faith together. I have faith in God in response to overwhelming love. I believe God created me and all I have and has given me gifts beyond measure. I have faith in Jesus who emptied himself out of great love for me. I believe Christ died on a cross for my sin, conquered death and the power of evil, and was raised to live on the third day. His death is mine, and his resurrection is mine. New life is a gift because of Jesus' words and work. I believe in the Holy Spirit in response to overwhelming love. I believe the Holy Spirit is present among us and lives within each person. The Holy Spirit calls people through the gospel and creates and builds the Church of Christ. Through the power of the Spirit, I have the power to stand in strength against all adversity. I believe Jesus is preparing a place for me and will come again to take me to be with him. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. Please share the peace with one another. <laughs> from Isaiah chapter 64 verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that you did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. <clears throat> Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to help to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. <coughs> Yet you, Lord, our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure. Lord, do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given, to, given you in Jesus Christ. For in him, you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for us, Lord Jesus Christ, to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thus ends your readings. Thanks, sir. Please stand for the Gospel. The Gospel is uh, found in Mark chapter 13. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, 
right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. So how are things with you? I hear you won some uh, some swim swim uh, races not too long ago. Well, last Sunday you won, is that right? She improved all her times in her swimming, so congratulations. That's great. You know, like I've told you before, swimming is a great sport, so give me five. Yep. Well, today we lit a candle. See that candle? That's because we just started the Advent season. And Advent is a big word that means we're all preparing for who? Jesus, is that right? For the coming of Jesus Christ. And so we know that in December, on that special day, we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Isn't that right? And that's very exciting. So Advent is all these weeks before the birth of Jesus on December 25th when we prepare for Jesus to come into this world. But how do we prepare for Jesus to come into this world? What are some of the things we do to prepare for the coming of Jesus being born? Well, yeah, you can put your Christmas tree up. We also have presents, isn't that right? Because of you, there's going to be a lot of kids that are going to have presents that probably wouldn't get any, isn't that right? So we have presents, we have Christmas trees, we have, and we invite family, is that right? Yeah, elves on the shelves, is that right? Okay. But we invite family, and sometimes family comes in to visit. But what's more important is what do we do in here in our hearts? How do we prepare for the coming of Jesus? <coughs> What do we do? Jesus has to be born in our hearts, isn't that right? Okay, if he's born into this world and we don't allow him to be born in our hearts, it doesn't mean much, isn't that right? So it's very important for each one of us to make sure that when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, that we have asked Jesus to be born in our hearts. Why do you think it's so important for Jesus to be born in our hearts? Jesus loves us, and so therefore we can do what? Love him and love what? Other people, okay? So that's how the love of God gets spread. Jesus is born in our hearts because he loves us. We love ourselves, and then we love other people. So again, that's what Advent's all about. It's making sure that we know that Jesus is born in our hearts as we prepare for his coming, okay? And I don't have any chocolate, but I did get you a cup of cookies, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, Elise. Right. Sure. We you will do fun. And you're amongst friends. Yeah. Most. Right. Most. Most. <laughs> so for some reason, your wife is not it. It's not lucky to you. That's okay. She still loves you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the good news is, is that this is probably not going to be as long as Eric's sermons. That's my good news. So, um, but anyway, when um, when Eric asked me to do this, I wasn't sure what I would have to offer. But after praying and thinking about it, I thought of the Sunday that I was sitting in church, listening intently to Eric's sermon, when he looked directly at me and said, Howie, wake up. That's a big bag for you. <laughs> And use me as an example of someone whose life had changed because of God working in it. If that's not a sign that I need to share my story, I don't know what it is. 
by the way, if I wasn't sleeping, I was meditating. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone here think they can be perfect? That you can be perfect? I'm just the... Good. Somebody had a research. I used it on her, so she's doing that. I started seeing my therapist again last year, and we were discussing some things, and she asked me an interesting question. She asked me if I thought I could be perfect. I sat and thought about it for a while, and I said, yes, I think I can. She looked at me like I was crazy and said, you know, that's impossible and a huge burden to carry if you think you can do that. Growing up as I did, unchurched and living with constant disappointments, evictions, repossessions, embarrassment, thinking if you did nothing wrong and were perfect, everything would be okay became a way of life for me. I learned how to make up things that sounded better than the truth when questioned by friends about the things that were going on, and always thought that something would eventually go wrong, even when it seemed like everything was going to be okay. This is what I carried with me through my life, trying all kinds of ways to find happiness and a sense of peace. I think marrying Victoria helped put us both on the right path, but we still didn't have a clue what that path was supposed to be. My journey has been different than Victoria's, but I don't think either one of us would have had this journey at all if God had not put us on this path together. We got married at Christ the Redeemer Church. I was writing this and I had a blank and I couldn't remember the church I got married in. I said, CTR. CTR. Yeah. And I began attending, we began church attending regularly and getting involved. I played softball on the church team um, and helped with a building addition. I listened to the sermons, even though I didn't really understand any of them. It wasn't anything about Pastor Story, or it was me not knowing what he was talking about. Um, I did what I thought I was supposed to do, and which, in hindsight, was really just going through the motions and trying to do the right thing. When we switched churches and started attending LCM, I again got involved, but a little more in depth this time, because of Ray Beebe and Eric asked me to be a council representative on the Finance Committee. Go figure. <laughs> I don't know why I said yes. Um, I guess they were very convincing. From there, I moved on to the president of council and was a mentor for seventh and eighth graders. I didn't realize at the time, but I must have had an impact on these young boys because one of them, when he got married years later, he asked me to do a prayer at his wedding. Um, what an honor and a blessing that was. I was growing and being open, more open and accepting to God working in my life. I even started attending Saturday morning Bible study. I realized you didn't have to be a scholar to go to Bible study. But even after all these changes, there still seemed to be something missing. At the urging of Victoria, Larry Buckman, and Mark Schlichting, I decided to attend a renewal weekend called Christ Reduces Parish. This is when everything changed. I was able to dump all the things I had been carrying around and I had with me and realize that God loves me and forgives me. That weekend cleansed me on the inside and made me realize there was a better way to live my life without guilt and shame and how to have a sense of peace that I couldn't do by myself or through all the earthly ways I was trying to do to achieve it. I was forgiven. Forgiveness is huge. God gave his son to die to forgive our sins. What could be more powerful than that? Not always easy for us humans, but it can change lives. I believe it has more power for the person being forgiven than the person doing the forgiving, just as it did for me. When I spoke at Brett's rehearsal dinner, I told them that forgiveness would be one of the most important things in their marriage. True forgiveness, like God's, where it's like if nothing happened and you can't throw it in the other person's face and get angry or whatever, um, whatever that might be. I would not have been able to give this advice without accepting God into my life on that renewal weekend. That weekend also showed me how powerful reconciliation can be. I certainly had some people I needed to reconcile with. I apologized to Victoria, Tim, Brett, for my, these are my sons, for my flare-ups over the years and asked for their forgiveness and assured them I would strive to be better in the future. My relationship with them could not be stronger because I was willing to let the Holy Spirit work in my life. Unfortunately, you can't stay on this renewal weekend where it's safe and everyone cares about you and is a believer. You have to go back in the real world, which is scary. 
How am I going to use what I learned? How am I going to change? What will people say and think? Do I really want to take this risk? So I did make some changes because I wasn't carrying all that stuff around with me. The peace I felt internally was externalized. My temper went away. I was more tolerant of other people that I hadn't been tolerant before. I used to be pretty rude to people I thought I didn't like, even though I didn't even get a chance to know them. Victoria would say, cool it, you're doing that again. Now I was trying to understand her story. I became more patient and less explosive. Over time, however, if you don't stay in touch with God, it's easy to drift back to your old ways. I was starting to do that. I was starting to hurry around again, try to do everything myself when I got a wake-up call. I got in a car accident where I should have died. I was coming back from a party at my niece's daughter's house in Wisconsin. I was on 894, heading home, 60 miles an hour speed limit in my 1999 Monte Carlo SS. Um, and I was next to a semi and I started like having no control. I've never hired a plane before, but, and I've heard about it, but it can really happen. And I'm next to the semi, just kind of sliding, not being able to control the car, and the car starts going this way, and the semi's still going this way. And the front end of my car is underneath the semi. And the back tire of the semi hits the front right tire of my car, spins me out, and I do a 360, and I end up with my rear end up on a concrete, barrier in the middle of the, the highway and I came out of it with nothing I'm not saying God caused the accident but I certainly realized he was still there for me even when I neglecting him because through this process it felt like there was extra seat belts or something that was holding me in that seat and keeping me safe so I got back on track <laughs> and I started attending BSF Bible Study, Fel which is Bible Study Fellowship, at the urging of Tom Cricket. I started going every Monday night with Roy Herbst. Imagine 300 men in a church sanctuary on a Monday night during football season. <laughs> Quite amazing. We broke into smaller groups of about 15 and did a very structured, in-depth Bible study. You go through one book each year. I went through the book of John, the book of Isaiah, which was a lesson today, of, that was a tough one, and the book of Genesis. This is when the Bible started speaking to me. I could never relate to the parables or any of the scripture until these in-depth Bible studies. I stopped going to BCF, various reasons, but I continued to read my Bible every morning before I go to work. And I told Victoria the other day that I could have made a movie out of the passages I just had read. That's amazing that you can understand it. I can understand it now that that would be possible. Excuse me. I pretty much stayed on track, but started drifting away again and decided to attend, attend the Walk to Emmaus weekend retreat. After arriving and participating in the day's activities, I started to wonder why I was there. That night in chapel, I had a conversation with one of the pastors. And I said I had been to a similar retreat called Christ Reverses Parish and already had had my mountaintop experience. Why did I need to do this again? He said God always has a plan, and so we prayed about it. I then realized I was there to learn about a God we love, God's grace, and how I could be more of an instrument of that. Every retreat, every Bible study, every time of meditation is a different way to help you grow closer to Christ. It's amazing how much more you can give and share. I'm sorry. The rest of the weekend showed me how God's grace through agape love can work in us. I learned that in order to love others as yourself, you need to love yourself. It's amazing how much more you can give and share when you are at peace with yourself and love yourself as God loves us. I think of my journey as a three-way light bulb. Victoria was doing this, she'd have a prop with the light bulb here. <laughs> but that's not me. There are times when I am only 50 watts. Other times, I'm 100 watts. And then the best of times, I'm 150 watts. It's not easy to constantly feed the new animal. It's easy to go with what the world says is right. 
The struggle is to not give in to the, that temptation because you realize how much better it is for you, for the people you love and interact with, to constantly feed and nurture that new creation within you. You can't do it on your own. Though. You need to let the Holy Spirit work in you and guide you along the way. What you realize after accepting God into your life is that he's always been there. You can see times where the only explanation of how you got through it or why it happened had to be God. I'd like to share these thoughts from a booklet we used on a walk to Emmaus weekend. Hope you're not doing copyright for kids. They are a helpful <laughs> reminder to me that help me stay on track. My child, this is Christ talking. My child, think about your attitudes and disposition. Have your thoughts, your desires, your words, and your actions been worthy of one of my apostles? And my favorite one is, that really keeps me on track is are you with me or against me? At work in your profession or at recreation, have you been my disciple? Would you have been proud to have me, Christ, accompany you through the day. Think about that. Would you have been proud to have me, Christ, accompany you through the day? In my mind, Paul had the greatest conversion of all the apostles. He was a tax collector persecuting Jesus' followers. After an encounter with Jesus, he was transformed. He became one of the greatest evangelists the world has known. He dedicated his life to bringing people to Jesus. If Jesus can have this kind of effect on Paul, just think what he can do in your life if we just accept him. I have learned I am forgiven, I am loved unconditionally, and I have the power of the Holy Spirit working in me to help me become the new Adam God wants me to be. This has helped me in all areas of my life, whether I'm at work, at home, at the bowling alley, on the golf course, or wherever the new I Adam shines through. The people who used to be afraid of me at work are now some of my best friends. I am a brother, father, mentor, and friend. And this is just at work, in the real world. What a difference God has made in my life. Because I thought I could be perfect, my therapist had me do an exercise. I was to do something imperfect on purpose. Turn the wrong way, you know, when you're driving, do something silly, things that didn't matter, and the world wouldn't end, and I thought it would if I did them. But the best one I did, I think, was I dropped an egg on the floor on purpose while I was making breakfast. I just dropped it. Broke on the floor, let it sit there. Walked around it, cooked my breakfast. And I thought it would drive me crazy because I don't drive Eric crazy. But, <laughs> but it was freeing. It was like I didn't have to make sure everything was perfect. So can I be perfect? It's not possible. There's no way. But I realize now it's okay not to be. With God's forgiveness, grace, and agape love, I can just be me. And that's enough. Amen. Amen. I just want to say that what you just heard, uh, Howie, I mean, everything you said is on track, theologically. I'm serious. Your, your theology, your biblical things, your witness is right on track, and I'm telling you. So you've grown a lot. And this is what God can do for all of us is influence us in ways that are never possible. You probably did more theologically in a, in a witnessing and evangelistic manner than four years of seminary. <laughs> and I'm, I'm please, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. What you just said here today is more theologically correct than anybody coming out of some of the seminaries today. So that's because you've taken God's word and brought it into your heart and mind and you're living it in some fantastic ways. So God bless you. You're probably right. I probably would have picked up the air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go try that one. <laughs>
So my OCD is yeah. <laughs> probably still working this all way. Thank you so much. God bless you for, for saying that. Thank you. Yeah, at this time we're ready to sing, so please stand. And Howard's gonna be talking at the Gathering North, so they're gonna hear a great witness tonight. Thank you. salvation, saw our condition and provided the solution, saw our heart and gave us a savior. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sin is no longer the weight that holds us down. We are free to live in victory. We are free from the sin of our self-deceit. We are free from Satan's power. Praise God for freedom. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
minutes in prayer, please. Lord, we just again thank you for the words uh, from Howie and the great witness. It's definitely a, a spirited witness. came from the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that. We also thank you for the many blessings we receive each and every day. It's important for us to have an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful for your presence in our lives and the, the little miracles that you do for us that sometimes go unnoticed. But at this time, we'd like to lift up uh, the opportunity to speak openly about blessings or joys as well as uh, concerns or sorrows. So speak openly or privately to yourself at this time. Lord, I just want to thank you for the miraculous thing you're doing in Ray's life. I just, I just pray that you keep doing it, and I know that you are faithful. So if we believe that you are faithful, you will bring it to pass. Father, I ask you to be with Lindy Wellhausen. Continue to heal her, Father. As she has so much life and so much to give. We know you have great plans for her, Father God. So we lift her to you. We also lift up the sister who's had continued dialysis. And we ask you to continue healing her, Father God. And I just give you thanks for praise. We have wonderful things for you. Lord, we've seen your powerful healing hand with Tristan and Robert and Gladys and Stephanie, and we just know that your healing hand will be laid upon Ray as well, and, and that uh, he will come out of this uh, all the better for it in his own unique way. So continue to work in his life and support Laura as well. Lord, I want to lift up Floyd Barclay. He's heavily with cancer. I just ask you, Lord, to touch him with your healing power. Help us all, Lord, during this Advent season to turn our hearts to you, to really make that choice uh, to make you Lord of our lives, and not just another Christmas season, but uh, if you need to sit on our throne of our hearts, now is the time to do it. It's not worth waiting any longer. We need to make that decision because you made a decision for us. We're just returning the favor in response to your love and grace. We also lift up Carlos, uh, keep him in continued prayers. I think he uh, is dealing with uh, transplant surgery, so apparently he's doing quite well. Here at the Gathering North tonight as they celebrate uh, one year of existence. <coughs> and so we hope and pray, Lord, that uh, you continue on there as well. And uh, thank you for blessing us with uh, the presence of those up there at, at uh, Glenview as well. Lord, I want to lift up Diana Dawson. I ask you to find her a job, Lord, a good job that she can sustain in her life. All these things we lift up in your most precious name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and come forward at the usher's direction, please. Rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love, grace, and truth. Amen.
and he went home and he was in recovery. Praise and God. prayers are just everything. So the prayers that you give to the people here in the gathering and to the people out in the world, just keep on doing it. We saw it rain and how much our prayers are doing for him. So I just want to thank him. Prayer is what activates the Holy Spirit. Remember that. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.